Welcome everybody. My name is Ogi and I'm going to explain the basics of Git for you. Everybody knows what Git is, so you probably heard about it. I'm going to start with the, the first slide, which is what was, what was it like before version control existed and it's how the things were going on with programming and uh, with the pioneers of, of this beautiful industry. So basically until the early eighties, like there were these like manual edit tapes. I actually have one. I wanted to show you guys, I have it like all backed up and all, only cellophane and uh, keeping it safe, but I couldn't find it. I probably put it somewhere safe. So those magnet tapes, this was like a tape where you punch zeros and ones. And basically later when you run it to the machine, it displays a set of characters, which are also known as code. So basically whenever an uh, origin, like a source code was created, the initial part of the project, you punch a tape, you keep it at the side as a backup copy. And then whenever an update is created, you make another one with the update and then you test it out, run all the tests. Uh, if it satisfies the requirements, if it performs as it should, then you create another tape with the updates and you again, keep it at the side as a backup copy. So as you can probably understand, it was a really hard time to do There was a person always employed doing that stuff in big companies. That was the time when a, a, IBM existed. So I guess they were doing the same thing. And that was really hard labor to say, and it took a lot of time. So before that, before the CSV and SVN, it was really, there was a lot of loss of source code during the magnetic tapes, demagnetizing. And even when it started, like not many people were actually using the version, the first Ver versions of control, like a uh, concurrent version system and sort SVN and, uh, and stuff like that in the early eighties, like web developers, they were like resisting to do this for some reason. I couldn't figure out why, because they really wanted to just have everything backed up physically. That was their thing. And in the early nineties, when the web development kicked off, they were, they were still really resisting to this, even though the Concurrent version systems and SVN were existing. Nothing has been changed from them until the early 2000s. Well, this is where the fun actually begins because early 2000s programming really skyrocketed and pioneers who made the roads for all of us, they were ready to, to like come out of their shells and start creative destruction as, as I would like, like to say as many, as with many great stuff in life, uh, Git be began with a bit of a creative destruction and that set foot to the early stages of Git because before there did the development communities didn't exist and the uh, Linux kernel starting in the 1900s to early 2000s, their community was really, really strong. And they were open source, which wasn't a, a, like a popular thing back then. So uh, Linux kernel, they hired the people to develop some version of source control for them, which would be acceptable. And its name was a uh, BitKeeper in 2002, but they didn't really perform. There were some uh, minor stuff they didn't agree on. And uh, at the end, they uh, break off uh, their cooperation. And the community of Linux kernel, they, on the, on the stuff they learned from developing, working on BitKeeper with their partners, they started developing Git. And, uh, hey, Augie, to jump yes. in real quick, just for the benefit of those who might not be familiar with the dev side, could you give kind of a broad overall definition of Version control, source control, just that as a concept. Version control and coding is having a lot of people contributing and working at the same project at the same time without their code colliding or causing any issues for the parent project, like for the origin source code, developing features, coding, changing stuff, and pushing all that together to work as a single 
a unit on origin source code. That's pretty much how, when I think about Git, that's how I imagine it. A, a lot of small streams pushing to a big river, which goes to the sea at the end. <clears throat> so with basic stuff they learned with the, uh, with previous cooperation with partners, the Linux kernel community decided what they actually want. The first thing they wanted is speed, like really fast stuff uh, without having to wait a lot of time and waste a lot of time on pushing code to, to the branches, to the computers, to the network, to anything. And the other important thing is also simple design. So nothing special, only like command line stuff. You have commands on one side, you have speed on the other side and nothing else. So the user interface was almost non-existing at the time. It, it was literally nothing. The other side, the third side, well, it actually was a strong support of non-linear development, which meant that everybody from anywhere could contribute to the work that is being done. Also fully distributed, like everything was open to anybody and uh, nothing could go through uh, Git without Git knowing and everything was 100% transparent. And the final, the final and not the, the least important thing is handling large project, which is, which uh, really came as a, uh, like if the pro the bigger the project, the slower the speed and uh, they didn't want that. And basically what I've done, they just managed the handle by branching and by simple design and speed, get a, get great speeds for the big data project. And that's about the basic concepts. So what is Git? Like a Git, as, as I wrote in the first bullet, like stream of snapshots. What does that mean? That means that when you have a text file, which I'm going to show later uh, in the coding part, you have a uh, text with some words in it and you want to add you like you're making a resume for yourself when you carry your basic resume uh, and okay you want to update that resume later and update it you add your latest work experience change your profile image on that uh, document or anything like that and you you save it like you type my new resume updated then you put the date on the time so that's really not necessary because when you push to git git will automatically create snapshot of your old resume and your new resume and compare the differences. And that's basically what the stream of snapshots is. Other stuff, which I like the most is local first and offline powers. Yeah. You don't need to have internet in order to work with Git. So if you are like superstition man or, or a woman, and you, you think that your project is not safe online. Basically, you can keep everything on your hard drive, on your local uh, repository, anywhere on your like external hard drive, USB, anything. You don't need internet to work. When you download the Git, you need, you need the internet to download it, of course. Everything is offline. So basically, all from the in initializing the project to creating any other branches besides your main branch, you work locally and that's that is what gives offline powers like uh, locally everything is faster of course basically <laughs> integrity of give uh, of git is as i said uh, nothing can get uh pushed through git without you having your digital uh footprint on it so once you create a git account you will connect if you are going to push the repository you're gonna connect your git with your account and the change in the code or text or whatever is going to have your footprint and uh, everybody will know who is working on the same repository as you are that you made those changes. The last thing is the three states of Git. The first state of Git is modified state, which is you will always be able to display the changes that you have done and you have not committed. The second state is staged and the third stage is committed. The staged change is that all the changes that you made are 
staged and ready to commit to push it through the server repository. And everything is committed and you have a new branch with the new stuff ready to be reviewed by your coworkers and uh, anybody who's working on the, on the Git. I'm going to speed up a little bit here because all this stuff is <clears throat> pretty much straightforward and you have on the official Git page, you have instructions. So basically when you want to install Git on a Mac, you just type uh, Git. This, this is two, the two slashes here, version. And uh, if you have Git on your Mac, nothing will happen. You, you have a version displayed. If you do not have it, Mac will prompt you to install it. For Windows, you have a GUI, which is pretty neat. And uh, I don't actually really like to use it, but the people, it gives you really an abstract view of how the branches work. So anyone starting with the Git, I would probably suggest start using it. So you can like visualize how actually your code is getting pushed to the branches. Setting up your identity, as I mentioned earlier, is uh, through Git config. So you will type in Git config and you will type the information below, uh, because working in the repository, you need to have your username and your email in order for the changes to be addressed to you. So this is pretty straightforward and every, everybody has to do this only once. So once per PC or, or Mac, and uh, this is only one time thing. So you have to do this once on every machine. SSH keygen, it's like a security feature that will allow you to publish everything you have on your local machine to imposter. Let's get into some basic commands. I added here a couple of basic commands. There are more as well. There is Git. Let's start with Git init. What Git init will do when you when you create a folder and you type git init in your command line in that folder, it will create a git file. And that way, that folder will, will automatically become connected with the git and you will be able to use all the git commands and git features that git provides. The first most common use command is git status. It displays the status of your local repository. So any, any changes made and you will have the modified files there, you will have not committed, you have unstaged files, anything you have done, you will, you will see through Git status. So that's pretty much the most common use. The second one is Git add. When you make a changes on a file and you want to do Git add, you type Git add and then type the name of the file. So Git add app.js, which will be like the most basic stuff. And it will put your app.js file to the modified but staged state. So you have those changes staged. After that, you're going to do git commit, or which means that you will uh, move to the third state of the three states and that git have, which is pushing to a repository. A slash app means that you're going to type a message inside, which I'm going to show you right now. So here I created a Git 101 folder. So this folder is not connected to Git. You see, it says like not the Git repository or any of the parent Git directories. So uh, it doesn't know what Git is, but when I type here, Git init, it will initialize empty Git repositories it says here, and this is now a Git. I can use any of the Git commands. It actually created, uh, how do I see? I can check the status now. I am on a, a branch master, which is like, for some reason, the default uh, branch here. And I can pretty much do anything I want. I can create create a file here with like touch index.html. And uh, you see the file will be up, it will, the file will appear here. So uh, if I, <laughs> I will add some stuff in this file. I can just add, like, I will write just some small heading. This is a git 101 demo. And I will save that. And now when I check the git status, it will tell me, aha, you have untracked files here. So untracked files are files that are just created and uh, they're not committed or non existing in the parent branch, which is in this case, this branch, because this is the only branch we have. But now when I do add index 
dot html and i press enter and i do git status again it will tell me aha uh -huh, so we have a new file which is index.html and we can uh to an un unstage here which will remove this file from this stage which is <coughs> stage status of the three stages and put it back to our original status which is unchecked file as it was and to continue with the work i'm gonna do git commit i will slash i mean like this and I will put the commas and I will add the message between, which will be this, this, and initial commit. And what, what did I do? I pressed three M's, which is not. So you do it. And you will have one file changes, 11 insertions, uh, which means that I added 11 lines of whatever here it doesn't have to be html it can be whatever this as we mentioned earlier the git takes a snapshot he doesn't care what's inside it will take the original snapshot which will be empty index html or non-existing html in this case and the others it will find aha uh -huh, you added eight mix html with 11 lines of whatever in there and the final command we're gonna do is git push which will add this to, I, I'm not going to create it because I have other plans here. So basically what you do, uh, git remote add name and URL, if we create the uh, local repo here. So we don't want to do that because I'm going to show you actually GUI and how to actually back to basic commands. So next really great thing is branch. So, and branch history, as I mentioned. So what is Git branch? Git branch is like, imagine a tree, like the living tree, which has its main branch. How do you call it an English? I'm not sure. I'm sorry. And all the branches are a chunk. Yeah. Imagine the chunk and all the other branches are coming out of that chunk. That's exactly the same in the Git. Everything leads to a chunk and everything is out of the chunk. So. Uh -huh. When you git branch is going to just do a listing of the branches that you have in your local repository. Git branch with branch name will create that branch. So we are going to create, for instance, git branch feature forward slash demo, and that will be our new branch. But if you do git checkout B and you do feature a new feature, it's going to Create a branch name, feature new feature, and check it out immediately so you can work on it locally. So what am I gonna do? I'm gonna show you how that how that is done. So if I type here like git branch, it will just tell me, aha, uh -huh, I have one branch here. So I want to create a new branch. I'm gonna do git branch feature demo 101, which is Probably not a, a good naming convention, but I'm going to come to that later. And if I type git status, okay, I now here, aha, I am still on a master branch. I'm going to type git branch now. You see, all right, I have my branch there about. So I'm going to do git checkout feature demo 101. And it says here, switch to branch. And you have here as well that you know that you are switched. And I'm going to create some files here as well. So I'm going to add fjfs and I'm going to add style, style.css. And if I type git status, which you can see those files are created, but they are kept new in, I have two unchecked files. So to add multiple files that are unchecked or, or modified and you want to stage them or I mean, to add everything you have, you can type git add and you press a dot and you press an enter and may check your status now. You will see that all the files we changed are now committed, uh, are, are now staged and ready for to make. You're going to add a message, add style and JS, and they're going to push that. You can git push. Yeah, we're not, but it is ready now.
Uh, the one thing I wanted to talk to you about branch is uh, Merge Jeff. So what is Merge? When me and Fisher are working on one feature that is connected to a single, like if we are both working on a home page and Fisher makes changes before me and those changes are directly affected by the stuff I added. For example, he updated the same buttons that I had been refactoring or something like that. And when I push my changes through the branch and I want to uh, merge all the master changes into my branch, so I'm up to date, I will have a conflict, which will say, all right, like one person, in this case, Fisher, has already made some changes here and we are having profits. This is a pretty common thing and that, that's something to be scared about if you ever come up to this and uh, Git will provide you with really great UI and snapshots of the changes that were made and led to this conflict and the conflict itself. So on one side, you will have the conflict. On the other side, you will have history of changes that led to this call. And you can basically pick everything and fix it easily. It's re really neatly done. I don't have any words to show you right now with conflict, but I have a uh, documentation that is really nicely uh, explained uh, regarding this matter. The next stuff, naming convention. So basically, uh, we work with Jira and uh, Jira has a really uh, nice naming convention, which is when you have a feature or you're creating something new in code, you type feature slash, but you don't go the new feature with the new feature, but you type the task code. It's not really uh, commonly used, but when I think about it, I think it is used in really big companies where there, there is hundreds of people working and it's better to work that way because people tend to over explain their commit messages during the commit. So people write, okay, so in this, like for example, on this home screen, I have changed this and that, and I had these issues and I couldn't fix. I mean, it, you need to keep commit messages really short and concise in order to, to keep the uh, branch history clean. Because it's really important for somebody, to, when somebody wants to come, or when somebody comes and works on the stuff you did and actually goes through the history uh, to see uh, like this really amazing feature you have done and he wants to see entire uh, history of that, he's gonna, he's gonna go through the history of, of, of every merge, of every branch, of every commit, and he's gonna need Consists and a small amount of information that is directly related to the stuff we did. <clears throat> so for Jira, feature forward slash the code of the task that relates to Jira task is really good stuff because tasks are really nicely explained most of the times. So I'm gonna create a simple Git repository for you guys so you can see. I'm gonna use a uh, Git uh, GUI for this which is the easiest thing to do. So basically what you do, you go to your icon and you click to your repositories and it will take you here that if you have no repository, it will tell you to create a new repository. So here you can choose a template. I have none and I'm just going to create a blank a repository. Quick to that is I'm type here a repository name. It will be a demo git 101 here it checks if i already have any repositories with that thing which i don't and it is all right i'm gonna type a description this this is initial template for demo git 101 i will make this repository public and most people don't do that but i try to add a readme here uh, i mean it, it is pretty neat to do this because um, you can add a lot of explanation stuff here and it's like how to build your project and stuff like that. Also, the second thing is Git ignore. I forgot to mention this. Git ignore is, it is a Git function that allows you to tell Git which files you do not want committed. For instance, on EMX, we have built and with that build, we have specific port versions, stuff like that. And I really don't want to commit any of that anytime. 
all, the only case I want to do that is when I'm starting some package that doesn't exist already yet. So basically I want to add some of this stuff to be ignore, but you gotta be careful with this because it will be committed. So if you are doing this locally for yourself, you can do it, but if you're going to push the git ignore, don't do it. Anyway, I'm going to create a repository. And the main branch here, it will be the main branch is the default branch. And here it says, okay, I have one branch. I have file here, which is empty. It just says demo. This is initial with the stuff I, I wrote earlier. And I can create another branch here, which will probably be develop branch, which will be the first branch, like the big branch that's coming out of the trunk and the trunk will be the main branch. So I will create a branch called develop here. And here you see, it says create branch develop from branch main. I'm going to do that and it will create a developer. So I have two branches now. If you go to code here, it will say, okay, I am on develop and I have two branches here. After you've done that, what you can do, and we told the uh, setting up before we had, you can just click here uh, when you go to the code. And if you want to clone this repository, you will copy this HTTPS. You will open your CLI or terminal or whatever you're using. I'm going to just create a folder here inside Git 101. I'm going to go, go to it. And I'm going to, it, it's now included in the Git. I think well, I'll be able to do it. And now I'm going to clone it. And now when I, something happened. You see, I will have the demo Git 101 inside of my, my folder. And when I go to it, I will be able to type Git status and it will tell me your branch is up to date with origin main. And I will be able to change to, I think I'll be able to see, I am now in develop. The second branch I just created in the, in, in the kit, in the, in here, in this GUI. <clears throat> Does anyone have any questions so far? I mean, I've been running pretty fast through this. I thought that was cool. All right. Thanks. Yeah. yeah. I thought the talking about commit messages was cool. I typically write like a detail <laughs> paragraph for some commit messages. That makes sense to have a shorter so you guys can like pick up on it quickly. Well, yeah, yeah, you're right. I mean, uh, like when you work and sometimes you become overwhelmed with all the stuff that you wrote and you just really, you should, maybe you, you want to say to your colleagues, all the things that you have done in this PR, maybe it's a small PR, but the, the importance of the stuff you did is big, but when you look at in the long run, it's uh, much more important to make uh, concis, uh, git messages that will just relate to the stuff you did, not going into depth. Like I, I make this mistake uh, a lot, especially with, if I uh, have some uh, trouble finishing something like that, I tend to write uh, a little bit more than, than I should, but I try to fix. Anyway, I want to mention some bad practices, which I actually don't really have experience with, but the first one will be force push. I feel this is like danger alert, everything bad, like red. So like when you type uh, force push git in Google, like uh, you will a lot of uh, strange stuff and stories from people that were like leaving their job, fighting with their colleagues all that bad stuff happening, like, that's like a big no for anybody, but like they say, if you know what you're doing, you can do it, but it's not recommended anyway. So it's like, it's one of those stuff, like, do you really want to do this? Like their terminal will ask you, are you sure you want to do this? Like even even computer knows it's bad. So, so you, you basically don't do this. 
It's a, it's a git force push command. Uh, you can Google it up really easily. Second stop is commit messages, which I mentioned, as well as history rewrite with git rebase, which I'm not going to go really through. Basically, uh, git rebase is uh, pretty much the same as git merge, which I explained to you, but you got to be careful because uh, rebasing master into your branch can sometimes, in some cases, I'm actually not using a uh, rebase. It is recommended. But I'm just going with the plain old merge and the merge will not rewrite the history of, of the branch. It will, it will, you will be always able to access everything that happens in your main branch or develop branch or anywhere, just using the, the Git merge and resolving profits. Another stuff, which I make a, a mistake a lot is uh, old branches. This is, it's good to delete a branch. So basically what you do, you, you type Git branch slash D, which is for delete. And once you're done with the branch, you just delete it. You don't want to keep a lot of old trash uh, stuff at anywhere, like even, even on Git. Because if you are working for months and years on a project, there will be a lot of dead branches that you don't need. You just cut them off and uh, you continue with the new ones. So. Some, I want to say some stuff about good practices. Also, I mentioned like commit only related work. I sometimes make this mistake even today. Like I, I tend to uh, like work on a feature. I don't know why I'm changing some stuff on a screen. And then I got a saying from a QA, oh, we have a bug over there. And I see, okay, I can quickly add this to this PR I'm creating and top, I fix it, I push it. <clears throat> And uh, that, that's really not, not really, it, it's okay, but it's not a good practice. It's a good practice to always, uh, always make small, big, small pull requests. And like you're doing one task, you quickly do stuff that you need. You commit, you make a pull request, which I'm going to show you also now. You get reviewed by your colleagues and coworkers, and then merge that uh, pull request with, with your develop branch. I mentioned also causes uh, commit messages, swap pull requests, and pull request reviews. Okay, this is this is really cool stuff, and it came to my mind recently how important the pull uh, pull request reviews are, especially when you are working in an environment that is dedicated to make something cool, something clean, something anybody coming over from anywhere from any side will be able to understand and catch up quickly. You know. So let's say I have a really big bug, which is causing apps to crash. I want to fix it. I fix it. I merge it into the develop and maybe I make a mistake uh, in the process. And that is the reason why the pull requests are really important. And uh, you should always wait for your colleagues to check your pull request and then, and, and approve your work because like two or three or four sets of flies are better than your, you are maybe tired. You are maybe uh, working 10, 15 hours. And it's really easy to make some stupid mistake that you won't make like in any other case, even though you had like good intentions and you wanted to fix quickly, but always like call your colleague, ask him to, to check it out for you. It's not a big deal and it's really good stuff. And yeah, I wanted to show you the merge. So uh, I'm going to create another branch here, which will be feature as the text, uh, read me edit. I'm going to write the policy's name. So I'm going to make this branch and I'm going to open up this file by doing clicking here. And I'm going to write something here. This is edit that read me file and I'm gonna, I'm gonna commit changes. Oh no, sorry. I'm gonna do it again. Okay. Here in, uh, this is like a message that you type in or uh, when you type in terminal git commit message, this, this is what this is. So it's a, uh, I'm gonna type create it, update it. So read me and type as that one sentence and I'm gonna wait. 
another change here and I'm going to commit change and here, like, so how do I create a brand or request from me? Oh yeah. So once you made those changes and you created that branch, you go here to pull request and you will see here, aha, uh -huh, feature readme edit had recent push, uh, pushes less than a minute ago. Great. That's what we did. So I'm going to create a pull request here by just clicking on this with button. And you can have here, this is like a title of the pull request. So you can basically type here anything, what you want, it will be a like really constant short. And you will see, so this is the stock, the snapshots I have been talking about. So see, see here, like Git shows you what has been changed and what is the new change. This is how it looks. It's pretty amazing. Like that has never been existing before, uh, the, the Git has been created. Like this is the superpower of the Git. And it will say, aha. Uh -huh, so what we did, we had an update with me, which was first commit that they did without a message. And this is the second, which I added a message. It read. So. It has been verified. It has been done. This is like a uh, branch code, nothing special. And we're going to create pull request here. Here you see, it says checking if it's ready to merge. So if it wasn't uh, ready to merge, we, we would have some conflicts here. So it says here, this branch has no conflicts with the base branch and it is ready to be merged. Merge, uh, merging can be performed automatically. We don't want that. And if I had someone, I have no real mirrors, I would add fish edge, grill, chow, cannon to check off my, my branch. And if everything is okay, they will check it and they would approve. If they wouldn't approve, they would probably leave a comment here. Like this is not a cute PR and they would request re request change here. Like <clears throat> you see, and they can relate to the stuff that they wrote. After all that is done, which will, which is a little bit in depth, you will just press here, merge full request. You will always confirm merge if you're really sure. And after that, it will like send a call out to you, full request successfully merged, you're all offset, featuring me, branch can be safely deleted. So all the changes we made are now into develop because we created our branch from the develop and we're going to do a good practice and delete the branch. And that would be pretty much it. So to make a conclusion on this, if you remember the magnetic tapes that I mentioned at the start, so imagine you're having to keep all the, a, a lot of copies of your code all over your hard drive or, or I'm aware or flash and any time any change has been made, like that you would have to back up your current code, add them the change in, in, in the copy, test the copy. If it's working, you put it in, uh, in the new branch and make another copy of it. If it's not working, you send it back to the developer, delete the current one and wait for the updates. So the benefit is pretty obvious, like hundreds and thousands of programmers can work on the same code simultaneously and all the changes can be tracked by you. That is the method. Second stuff is open source community. Like I really love open source. I, I like, uh, stuff that open source communities, because when I think about it, people who are driving to, to, a, to one goal with desire and will to work on it. I, I don't think that anything bad can come out out of it. It's, it's only good stuff. So. Protected code as well, like it, it is uh, tracking everything. Yeah, everything is, is, is really good. And you could check all the changes and uh, it, as a, the final stuff, it allows us to create a better application structure and clear code with all the stuff combined. I said in the last slides, in the previous slides, does anyone have questions? Thank you, Agi. This is what enables our devs to simultaneously work on stuff together and it's a crazy thing but it's the only way that you can have uh, a lot of cooks in the kitchen it's very not, nice not really just devs figma which you use for design has a version control implementation in it as well so everything augie said it can pretty much be applied to just about anything it does it's not just code we used this for design and there were pretty advanced features back in the day and like abstract and all these good stuff. 
So yeah, it's more of a concept where Git is, GitHub is just the implementation, but the concept can be applied to just about anything. He mentioned the resume. I have a buddy who uses version control for his invoices. So yeah. Yeah. So it's a cool system. Yeah. Actually, I've learned a lot. I didn't know about all, all of this and I still don't know some of the stuff that you mentioned because it takes a bit to learn, right? But at least it was a, a useful information for me being a, a, a designer and all. So thank you. I think the only question I'll ask is that I noticed like a half of developers use Jito for their repositories. Why? I mean, there's also Bitbucket and stuff. I know like GitHub is the best, but I want like I want to ask from the standpoint of developers. Why are you guys more focused on GitHub and you guys don't use the other guys? Uh, well, you, you know, like there is like a lot of GUIs that you can use instead of typing in plain command line, like, but you have a lot of like styled command lines and uh, some user interfaces that help you use Git. But the issue is that you can use Git in its full potential only on terminal or command line or like the native iOS stuff. So I guess that using Git on its native ground is the best way to get its full potential, I would say. That's my opinion. To say that, that was expensive. Yeah, it's so GitLab, Bitbucket, they all have their, their perks, right? But like GitHub is like number one and then everything that's new for the most part comes to GitHub first. As how many people have never used Git or version control before? I would argue that for the most part, almost everybody used Git to an extent or uh, an implementation of principles. If you use like Google Drive with like version control or Dropbox or Dropbox paper or the Google Docs or anything that auto saves your progress and lets you jump back in history. That's an implementation of Git of sorts, right? So you probably used it in a few places without realizing that's what it is. But yeah, it's interesting to know the underlying technology. It's like super complex and huge in its like rawest form, but the implementations can be as simple as, you know, Google Docs just auto saving your stuff and letting you go 30 days back. But it is what get essentially nice so hope this was uh, useful for everyone to learn from and happy friday everyone yeah thanks for having me